surrounding, stumble in the dark. You kept pushing on, but then you went too far. When your ship has sailed and all your dreams are lost, everything is wrong. You feel like it's your fault. Just remember, I will be there for you, baby. Remember, there's nothing out there to get you. Don't forget it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Roughneck Racing Truck Series. We are live here from beautiful Chicagoland Speedway for a night race. Live on the Sim Racing Media Network. I am Angel Santiago, joined today by my broadcast partner, Alan Bergen. Alan, how are we doing tonight? We're doing good. It's, hey, look, we're in Chicago. All right, I would... It's not Chicago. Let's call it Joliet, Illinois. You know, about three and a half, four hours north of uh, of St. Louis, home of the uh, 11-time world champions, Cardinals. So, anyways, happy to be here tonight. And, you know, we're 75 laps here tonight with, you know, 71 degrees, 48% relative humidity, partly cloudy sky, and then an eight mile an hour win, so it's gonna be a good race. It is gonna be an amazing race. I, I, this has got to be one of my favorite. I, I think I keep saying this every week, maybe, but <laughs> um, I love iRacing. racing. I love, I love being on this, and I love, I love being out there racing. But Chicago Land is such a fun track. It is a track that you can, you can be wide open. Yeah, but not for long and also depending where you are or where truck is in front of you um there's there's a lot to this track and i i love it you look at the the photo which isn't always perfect but you know what i think it exemplifies this track perfectly where that backstretch it is not straight it is curved allen and that presents 
not not to say necessarily a challenge, but more so of less of an opportunity to rest. Yeah, you're always turning. You're not really perfectly straight. And, you know, this is one of those tracks that is now defunct, but we still get to uh, we get to get to race on here on iRacing as it lives in eternity on uh, here on iRacing as a couple other tracks get to do that also. But I, plus, oh, I don't mean to cut you off. I was going to say, I, this is just, you say, you know, uh, a defunct, but I really hope it doesn't stay defunct. You know, I, I hope this is a track that, you know, that, that does make a comeback one day. Well, I think it'll make a comeback, but kind of like Gateway did, where it is, you know, kind of ran like, you know, uh, USAC, USAC cars or maybe ARCA cars or, or, you know, even start off with trucks or, you know, maybe even Indy cars. Who knows? Yeah. I, and so many of those, uh, uh, can really put on a fun show, uh, here at Chicago. You know what? It's a weird fun uh, uh mix here is uh you know the out the audi 90 uh, uh gtos mm-hmm. those you you get a pack of like 10 or 15 of those it, they are a lot of fun here as well so uh if you're ever bored go out go and put out a show uh um with that <laughs> <laughs> so uh aside from that you know we're racing trucks tonight or they're racing we get to uh, uh watch and, and talk about them uh thank you everybody for joining us in our youtube chat our u- uh, usuals audi and uh duke we very much appreciate uh you joining us as always and jumping in chat with us uh 75 laps you mentioned this is this is a fast track uh, i think this is one of those races where it can go it can go by very quickly so track position i think will be key but at the same time you're gonna have to be able to save tires i mean it's a night race you're gonna have a lot of grip um it's not gonna be as grueling tight you know uh, as you would in a day race but the the tires do wear a good amount here in chicago and of course the, in the trucks in general for sure so and that's the one thing that that's the one thing you gotta be careful about i did get to run some official races here a couple of weeks back when they had the official races for the trucks here. It's a bad fast facility. I mean, you're almost just burping the throttle and that's about it. Yeah, that's that's about that's what I love about a track like this is and and you're going to see drivers where the bottom will be, you know, dominant early where this you know where where the tires are fresh but this is a track where you're going to see the drivers fanning out you know moving to the high side you know trying to keep that momentum but also again that high side you know you can have the speed and momentum but it, it really will cost you on on tires as well is uh say qualifying is all set well i tell you what christopher barker once again gets the pole with the 30.591 so Foothills Motorsports, they are arguably, arguably the team to beat every week, week in, week out. And I know I came on the tail end of the, of the season with you, Angel, but, I mean, they're, uh, well, it's almost like watching uh, Rick Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah, no, they are they are bad fast. Uh, they they know how to get it done, uh, and so we look at there in second place, Daniel Love by only you know fourteen one hundredths of a second. That is very close, and then you know twenty five one hundredths to to you know uh, Christopher's uh, teammate Stephen Shue in third. You know, but Daniel Love, you know, going back to him real quick, starting there in second place, went into last week with the points to lead and just just had an awful night. You know, just everything went wrong. Was involved in multiple incidents, not of his own doing. Um, and well, he lost the points lead to, to Jimmy Rowdy. So coming in the next week, putting a blazing fast lap there and going to put him in second, you know, to start, that's, that's a nice, uh, uh, confidence booster. I'd say for him, uh, going into tonight, uh, we'll go back on that in a second. Steven Shue and Dalton Steele in a couple of Toyotas there in row number two, Jeff Scott and Matthew Ace row three, Matthew Gall and James Wagner make up row number four. And then rounding out your top 10 is going to be Jason Kinney and Jimmy Rowdy. Yeah, so there in 11th will be Johnny Hurst. To his outside will be Rick Baldwin. Starting 13th will be Andrew Smith. Chris Ramsey will be to his outside. And looks like... Jeffrey Ledford will start 15th. Ty Trafford will start 7th or 16th. 17th will have Chad Hawkins. Mickey Devino will start 18th. 19th will be Edward Fiedler. 
Tim Richardson will start punt and Teresa Mama T will start shotgun on the field. Yeah, it looks like she's just not going to put in a couple of drivers there, Edward and Tim, not putting in uh, qualifying laps. So, going to have 75 laps. They get ready to go. Green flag racing again. Uh, thanks for the rest of these uh, fans as well jumping into the chat uh, with Noma TV, Delana as, uh, as usual, and then um, Anthony as well. Thanks for joining us. See the iRacing.com pace truck ready to hit pit lane. Lights are off. And we have 21 trucks, 21 drivers here hungry for a victory at Chicago Land. Well, I can tell you right now, as they come down that back straightaway, actually, they're, I believe it they're is. coming through the, uh, there it is, through the Geico, Geico Restart Zone. Yeah, they're going through the Geico Restart Zone, and we are green flag racing. Barney the Flagman going to drop it on Christopher Barker, their pole sitter here. And he's got great help from Steven Shu there uh, right behind them. And they're going to clear for first and second as the battle will be for third now between Jeff Scott and your outside pole to sitter there in Daniel Love. Daniel Love would love to stay up there in front of and not get in trouble last week. You know, Bristol, I, I just want to touch on Bristol just for a moment. It was a uh, it's kind of a wild card race. Right? Yeah, it, it felt about that way with how the chaos we saw for some of these drivers. And then you look at um, right there, Steven Shu had a big moment off of uh, turn number four. Going to cost him multiple sto uh, spots going from second all the way back to the sixth position. And look at these guys who fan out. Daniel Love's going to ride that out inside line as he's going to go to work on Christopher Barker. And the points race is so so tight right now that neither driver can afford to make mistakes say that yeah here comes daniel love he's gonna put down the fastest lap of the race there on lap number two goes to the inside he's gonna pull a slide job on barker he's gonna take the lead but here comes barker with a crossover to the inside as they go into three this is lap three not lap 73 this is lap three indeed and this is what this track produces I don't know why they ever closed it down, but nonetheless. Here comes Jeff here Scott. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Scott's coming to the party. He, he, he's thinking about it. He, he thought about making it three wide there, decided not to. Instead, pushing Barker down the front stretch to clear uh, Daniel Love. Love going to be a little bit tight, it looks like, off of turn two, going to ride high. And Jeff Scott still giving that drafting help to Barker, going to allow Jeff Scott almost to clear as they go into turns uh, three and four. Well, just as you thought that there wasn't any more participants in this little race for the lead, here comes Dalton Steele and Steven Shue. They're Dal wanting to get in on the mix, too. Yeah, Steven Shue trying to make up a little bit for that mistake he had earlier. And then Dalton Steele, you know, again, one of the winningest drivers here in the Roughneck Racing Truck Series on a part-time schedule. Uh, back here, ready to try to win a race here at Chicago. Uh, but going to be chasing down another Toyota there in Chris Barker, who... Done a good job so far holding on to the lead because these drivers are hungry right behind him. Jeff Scott is ready to take this lead. And he's ready to take the lead and not look back. But here comes that number 71 truck of Daniel Love working the inside, trying to trying feverishly to get around uh, Jeff Scott there for second place. Yeah, there's that battle for third now between Dalton Steele. If oh, come on, this thing's gonna get switched over eventually. There we go. We got a battle for third, a battle for fifth, almost a three-way battle for fifth there between uh, Jason Kinney, Stephen Shu, and Jimmy Rowdy, your points leader coming into tonight's race. So uh, he sees Daniel Love with a great start in tonight's race, but you know he does a great job of making his way through the field. Should he not get a good qualifying attempt? <laughs> well, I tell you what, Jimmy Rowdy in that. Hyde ride number 29, making, washing the laundry with these guys. It's the outside here, two wide, and about four rows deep. And I tires are going to come into play also, uh, Angel, as we got a little side draft action going on coming out of the two. Yeah. Oh, no, the wrecking. Whoa, oh, there it hang is. On, hang on, hang on. And we got Calamity. Jason. 
McKinney, Daniel Love battling. Oh, my goodness. And Jimmy Rowdy, your top two drivers in points here involved in this one. And Jeffrey Lefford as well. Oh, no. That's a tough break. This is not what Daniel Love needed, nor yeah, is it what Jimmy Rowdy needed. Oh, let's check out what happened there. It looks like... Ooh, the 38 side draft is a 45 there, which checked everybody up. Daniel Love comes down the racetrack. Gets yeah. Into the back. Of yeah, unfortunately, that'll be on the 71. They're just coming down the racetrack a little bit too much there on the 66. Oh, and no. uh, that's going to turn him sideways. Oh, it gets the 29 turned sideways to four. Randy does a great job. Uh, getting through there. The 30 had nowhere to go in James Wagner. You see Steven Shue just trying to inch his way through uh, there. Oh. oh, Matthew Gall, nowhere to go. Wow, I didn't realize the 29 was up in the air as well. Yeah, Jimmy Rowdy went for a ride. Oh, is he going to get collected again? Yes, because he, oh, Ledford had, that's where, yeah, Ledford had nowhere to go. He was on the bottom, assuming they'd be able to stay high with that. Man, just calamity right there on lap eight. I mean, there's a sense of urgency right now because of the fact that, you know, this is set, pretty much, I believe, the second to the last race on the schedule. Yes. No, you hit it right on the uh, uh, right on the dot there. It is the second to last race here on the schedule. They head to Talladega next week. So uh, I think that pressure is just maximized even more because you want to get as many points as you possibly can tonight to give yourself some of that, you know, room going into Talladega to, uh, uh, next week because... Well, I mean, come on, it's Talladega. We all know you you never know what's going to happen there. You you don't. It, it, you, you never know what's going to look. A lot of things could happen at Talladega. But I will say, if there's a driver that if he's got to have if he has to have a bad night tonight and he can rely on Talladega, it is your points leader Jimmy Rowdy, uh, um who's now uh the last truck uh in the field on pit lane still because that he, he just knows how to win at these plate races and uh, uh, whether it be uh talladega atlanta daytona he's figured out how to win so many of them and just these high speed tracks like michigan as well so uh that's a driver that you know going into that final race definitely look for him to be strong so drivers like daniel love um right behind him in points yeah you want to try to get as many as you possibly can tonight yeah i mean like you said, get as many wins as you can tonight, get as many points. Jimmy Rowdy going to spend a lot of time on pit road trying to get that truck fixed up and uh, try to get as many as many points as he can. So I, I think we almost have to say that you don't want to be the points leader going into the race because the last two races they've gotten wrecked out. No, you definitely don't <laughs> want to be. You definitely don't want to be that. Now, granted, Jimmy has... Leader. Has the uh, you know the the fast repair to use you know he's he's just a lap down now so uh, he he'll be all right for now but still definitely not a, a, an ideal way to start the first ten laps of the race. No, no, you do not want to start your. You, do, you that's not how you want to start this off. But I imagine that we will be hearing from Paul right now. Yeah, you'll be hearing from me. I'm just trying to make make sure that these guys are. Uh getting all sorted out there's a little bit of confusion on the track so bear with me here fellas as we do that iracing.com pace truck hits pit lane and barker gets going dalton Steele does not get a great start there on the outside of the front row it'll be side by side there for third and we'll see if uh, uh paul's ready for us yep we're ready okay no black flags yet there we go um <laughs> So upon reviewing that, and I probably watched it a dozen times in slow-mo and full speed, uh, it looked like they were both kind of vying for the same space there in the middle of the, to the uh, turn, and uh, they, they kind of got into each other, so they got into the back of the 66 coming up. Uh, I deemed it as a racing incident and didn't issue any penalties on that one. All right, Paul, thanks for jump, for for jumping in, giving us the update on that. Uh, yeah, they're definitely going to be suffering as well with their own point situation um, after that. So uh, uh, let them suffer enough here as we've got about 60, uh, 63 to go here. About to be 62, but Dalton Steele 
Getting to the outside of the 46, trying to make the pass for the lead here off of four. Well, I tell you what, right now, Daniel Long is, like you said, a lap down. Jimmy Rowdy might be saving that fast repair, putting it in his back pocket and just biting the bullet because he is about a couple laps down. So it's going to be inter interesting to see in that respect on how he does in the recovery run. Look at this amazing battle we have right now. It is the 46 and the 4 as Andrew Smith and the 4 on the outside trying to make some more time. Get into the outside there of the 46. Trying to get a little bit of side draft uh, on that uh, right rear quarter panel. Get some of that dirty air and slow him down a little bit. And now the 46 will have the dirty air, the 45 in front of him. So it's all about, you know, putting your truck where it works and, you know, where you can get the cleanest air. Uh, but also, you got to be able to save those tires, and still, still early on, you know, now lap 15, about to be 15 laps completed. Yeah, so we're on lap 15, coming to 16, and right now, Dalton Steele's got the best view, because he's got two trucks side by side, and he's got drafting help on the outside. Yeah, these drivers, you know, as as uh, per the last couple mile and a half races that we've had, uh, 75 laps, they're going to get three additional sets of tires for the race, giving them four total, including the ones that they started on. So uh, the averages, I think, was about 18, 19 laps um, a set. So right there, the four trying to use it to his advantage to try to get the lead. But, man, this battle for third is strong between Johnny Hurst and Chris Barker. These drivers are just making... A lot of good time on that outside, I think, as these tires age. Well, these these guys are throwing haymakers up here in the top four spots. So, if, here comes Chris Parker. He's going to make a move on the inside, try to ground a four truck. And now he's going to try to go three wide. They're going to use every inch of the racetrack. They're going to use the, the top, the bottom, the inside, the outside. So, in respect to that, they're going to go, they could almost go four wide. Well, no, they, they could go four wide. The space is there, but I just, I wouldn't trust the handling of the trucks and the, <laughs> um, no. to try to make it work. Here this comes Christopher Barker on the inside of the four truck. Is he going to get cleared? I know, well, I think dude. they're coming up on a lap truck as well. Uh, yeah, they're coming up here on Jimmy Rowdy, who does have a fresh truck, so he might have just had to uh, tow, and that's maybe what cost him that lap. Um, so he's a little bit, maybe about a couple of turns here in front of the leaders as, man, they're, you could throw a blanket really over the top ten. They're all within a second, within actually nine-tenths of each other. They're not getting away it's too far too quickly as... We go high above the Chicagoland Speedway here from in Juliet, Illinois. Tide Trafford there. It's, we, wow, we're just moving along. 20 laps complete. Or 19 laps complete. We're on lap 20. And I would be reminisced to say that, uh, well, I believe that Aaron Edward Fiedler has won the race of the beer stand tonight. So on our live timing. It doesn't look like he's moved, did he? No, I've got him moving. Okay. We'll oh. double check that in a second. Um, he has not won the race in the beer stand. Okay. He's like, no, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still racing. <laughs> As Johnny Hurst almost clears for that second spot, both him and Andrew Smith are currently up 10 spots from their starting positions. And Ty Trafford, actually, they're in the sixth position. So, shout out to them. Three biggest movers of the race. Uh, if Andrew Smith can clear Hurst, he'll take that, uh, uh, that, yeah, he'll take that, uh, uh, crown there as he'll be up 11 spots. But, man, this battle for second continues to stay strong as I think Barker right behind him says, you know what, I'll just try to save some of these tires that I have left. As you even see right behind, I think that was Jason Kinney just getting, uh, tagging the wall a little bit there. Um, or maybe Steven Shue off of turn number two. So easy to do on these old tires on a nice and long green run. It's easy to do on these, uh, what do you say, old tracks. You know, that's what I like about tracks like this, Kentucky, um, Iowa. 
the, the surface is rough. The surface is, you know, it old. Aged and, beautifully. And, yes. And you can slide these trucks around. They're worn out. They're, you know, I would just say they're worn out. I'd say they're worn in. Okay, Jeff Scott has lost a couple of spots. He was up there battling for the lead. Now he's down to eighth and quite possibly losing that uh, to uh, Stephen Shu. We got these guys battling back here for some good positions between, uh, let's see, James Wagner, Chris Ramsey. These guys are all trying to make them some spots. Uh, look at Daniel Love, you know, coming in second in points with Jimmy Rowdy currently trapped a lap down. You know, for Daniel, as awful as it is to be back here, it it is his best friend for a caution not to come out because then this allows, this keeps Jimmy, you know, trapped a lap down in his, you know, in his favor. Yeah, we are at lap 25 and you know look <laughs> this, this race right now is, is as long as Jimmy Rowdy has maybe eh, you know if Daniel Love can move up in the, in the, in the running order and Jimmy just stays down there He's going to, this is what he's going to need. Not to be three wide, though. I, that's, that's what he doesn't need. <laughs> no, he does <laughs> he, not need to He do backed that. out of that. I think he probably heard his spotter say three wide. He said, nope, I'm, okay, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to back off here. I do not need to get involved in the wreck. And that was uh, uh, the 19 of Rick Baldwin and the 0-1 of Jeffrey Ledford. You know, Jeffrey just trying to make up some spots after being involved in that initial incident. But here now, 20... 26 laps now into this race. I, I expect fuel mileage being somewhere around the 30, maybe 34 mark uh, with that caution possibly. So these drivers still got about another 7 to, I think it would take 7 to 10 laps left. So this is about where, you know, the tires, if, they are, if they're worn, they are going to show here over the next 10 laps here before uh, they start hitting pit lane. I think you're right as the YouTube chat is full with everybody here watching we want to thank everybody for making sim racing media and roughneck racing leagues your entertainment destination make sure you hit that like subscribe and bell notifications so you can be notified every time that sim racing media goes on the air more importantly us right because you know this is this is this is where uh, it matters <laughs> yeah you know, everybody's yeah. We all do. A good, everybody's a great job here. Now, of course, we're, ha we're having fun. Um, thanks, uh, everybody else, for the uh, uh, the good wishes. And hey, you know, what? I hope any any broadcast, uh, uh, action wise, is is amazing. Because anytime, who's who, who can complain about good racing like this? So I know these drivers are having fun. Probably uh, getting a little tired as well. You know, having to wheel these things. You have to really wheel these uh, uh these these trucks through Chicago. And we mentioned, you know, with this rounded back stretch where you just don't get that you know moment to just at least rest your arm it it can get a little tiring here yeah and you know 30 we're almost 30 laps into into this race right right now is not the time where you really want to make mistakes you're gonna get you really gotta dig down deep and find that extra little willpower uh as it were if you will and it's all, it's all mind over matter at this point. And here it is. We got a battle for a second. So Andrew, uh, uh, Matthew Gall was involved in that last wreck. And he actually went ahead and took his first set of tires um, on that stop while he was on pit lane. You know, I think he spun around and everything. Probably felt those tires were going to be no good. Uh, so kind of a little bit of a premature uh, time to take the tires. But... Man, with this nice long green flag run, it's allowed him to actually make his way back up through the field, uh, having started, you know, toward the back. And again, with this long green flag run, it's a, I think it's probably going to really allow him to, you know, not to really be a set behind. He's, you know, the rest of the drivers might have an extra set at the end of this. Well, I'm... look. <laughs> I think that worked out great for him. <laughs> I think it did, too. But that means his tires are a little bit newer than everybody else's. Who ah. did not? Because we got a little three wide going on right there. <laughs> a little three wide, man. These drivers are having fun. Look at the battle we're having here in the three. Well, it looks like these guys are going to try to go four wide there for a minute. 
Here it comes, Chad Hawkins. Thought about making it four wide. Looks like we got drivers peeling off of the pit road. Oh yeah, here it is. Our first round of pit stops comes now on lap number 33. Uh, that is Andrew Smith, Chris Barker, Matthew Ace, and Tim Richardson making their way down. As Dalton Steele, your leader, still going to be out here. And you know, for Matthew Gall and for these drivers who did come down pit lane, if you did, even if you didn't take tires, uh, you can't stay out too much longer. You know, you you got your advantage while you had it. You got to come down with them, or else you're going to lose too much time. I think. You don't want to lose a bunch of times also in, you know. Or is do you think is it beneficial because of the long green flag runs that we are having to try to extend it, knowing that when he, you know, when he does come back off pit lane, he will have a couple lap fresher tires still and make up that ground. That, that sometimes it does work out that way. Some of those fast drivers, you know, Matthew Gall, he's shown speed. You know, he was running second, third in points a little bit earlier this season. And he kind of had a rough stretch of races. So uh, this is a driver who can make a strategy like that work. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you to a point. Um, I would I would hope there's another caution, but you might be able to short fit and, and keep that third set in, in, in the pits and barring anything crazy goes on. Oh, Don still pits. Oh, almost contact with Matthew Gall there. I don't know if he just didn't hear him, didn't know what was happening, but wow, he almost, uh, that was almost a big wreck there between first and second as uh, Matthew Gall will take the lead. I was just about to mention how Dalton Steele was the only driver who had not hit pit lane. Uh, I think he does have a little bit of right rear damage, and I think that might have been some contact with uh, Gall. Yeah, I mean, so. It looks clean, though. It does. But anyways, no, yeah, so, um. We'll have to see, but yeah, so Dalton Steele definitely extended, you know, stayed out, oh man, what, four, three to four laps longer than some of his competitors, so, you know, he's going to lose a ton of time in the process. Uh, we jump over here to Andrew Smith, but come in three laps earlier, and Dalton Steele is coming around the bend. Now, granted, he did have, you know, I think about a second or so of a lead to make up for it, so. Um, Andrew Smith will take the position over him along with Barker. Oh wow, Barker's going to split the deal between a, a lap car there. But, you know, Dalton Steele will have a fresher tire so we'll have to see uh, if he's able to make up that time here in the next couple of laps. But Barker just put down his fastest lap of the race. Wow. Barker not wasting any time getting back up to speed. As Angel had mentioned, here we are at lap number... 38 of 75. And I gotta tell you, this is. We only had that one caution, and it's been clean and green all the way to the end. Yeah, I know we've had some drivers, you know, bumping, bumping and moving around. You hear you see Mama T and Daniel Love uh, racing side by side. So you got Mama T racing with uh, one of our, our top drivers here and trying to uh, move forward with that position. She is gonna make that pass there on Daniel Love so definitely not having a great night for himself but you know his competitor there in Jimmy Rowdy not having a great night as well so we talk about the top two drivers you know not having great nights at the moment and you know they were separated by 19 points coming in uh, Jimmy with that advantage so what about our third place driver well third place is Steven Shu, and he is 28 points behind the lead however only nine points behind Daniel Love and so uh, Steven Shu. Right now, running in that ninth position, so he's got an opportunity to definitely make up a good amount of points on Daniel Love, possibly pass him, and gain a lot on Jimmy Rowdy right before the final race of the season going into Talladega. Yeah. Talladega, also, Angel, it's a wild card race. You know, so anything can happen at Talladega. I mean, especially... Yeah, we got green right checkered, and the guy in 15th could end up winning the race. Who knows? Well, you know, when I talked about Jimmy Rowdy being as good as he is on these, on these, you know, big, you know, those, those, uh, big super speedways, but you know, Stephen Shu, he's he's a Foothills Motorsports driver, and you mentioned earlier at the start of this race how good of a team they are and how good of teammates they they work with each other. So you know, could you imagine he's got, you know, he's got to go win it possibly to win the championship and. What do you have? You have two of your teammates who are 
darn good plate uh, uh, racers like you are, I, I, man, that, that, that's going to make for a great race next week. Um, I think he's hoping for the best right now running in seventh, but Matthew Gall and Edward Fieldler, uh, Fieldler sorry, still have not pit. They both did pit um, on that, well, only caution that we had there on lap eight. And so they should be able to extend it uh, again for assuming about 30 to 35 laps. Probably going to be pitting here in the next uh, five laps or so. Probably even less. You know what's crazy, Angel? Is we have 21 trucks signed in. We have 20, 21 trucks still running after 43 laps. We've got 21 uh, viewers right now, actually, too. So you know, put put that number in the uh, in the book. Maybe <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Harrison Burton gonna win uh, Talladega this week. And here comes oh. Matthew Gall gonna make his way down pit lane. Looks like he does a good job of getting slowed up enough. So he finally makes his way down. You think Harrison Burton's gonna get number one this weekend, huh? Well, you know what? I'm just saying the 21s lined up there. It's a Ford. Those Fords are usually pretty bad fast um, at. Uh, at Talladega, and then we go over here to Andrew Smith, and I, I do believe that Matthew Gall, with 31 laps, there, there's a chance that I think he can make it to the end of the race, actually. So Matthew might not actually have to pay, while everybody else still ha will have to make one more stop. Yeah. Now, this has thrown everything in for a change. I can get down with that. You see Matthew Gall coming off of pit lane now, again, coming... 10 laps later than uh, uh, than the most recent of these drivers. Uh, so, of course, having lost a ton of time in the process. But if if he's not got a pit again, I, this could really work out in his favor. So um, the rest of these drivers, I think, without question, will have to make one more pit stop for fuel. As Edward right. Fieldler, Fieldler is still out there. Um, so we have to assume that he can definitely make it from here should he pit. question is going to be when. Well, like you said, it's not a matter of when. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Edward Fieldler might have played that uh, oh, there it is. card. <laughs> oh, there he is. All right, Edward right. Fieldler going to lead a couple laps, going to make his way down pit lane for the second. Well, actually, the third time today, he made two pits, uh, two stops on that, init or on that initial uh, caution. And uh, Andrew Smith will retake the lead as uh, the battle between him, Dalton Steele, Johnny Hurst and Christopher Barker. So it's a four-way battle for the lead right now, all within half a second of each other. Then you got to go another two seconds back before you see the next driver in Steven Shu, who is uh, trying to get as much points as he can to try to uh, uh, put himself in a good position to fight for a championship next week. Oh, boy. Woo, buddy. Andrew Smith. Wow. Or Steven Shu, rather. Driver out of North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And he is running fifth position. All by his own summer. He's lonely. Yeah, let's let's he's go briefly here. Him. Oh, man. Dalton Steele and Johnny Hurston was made contact there for a second. All right. We mentioned Andrew Smith uh, from uh, Tazewell, Tennessee there in first. Dalton Steele, Crooksville, Ohio in second. Trying to hold off a hard-charging Johnny Hurst there from Corbin, Kentucky. Chris Barker from North Wilkesboro, and then Stephen Shu as well from North Wilkesboro, his Fort Hills uh, motorsports racing teammate. You see Jimmy Rowdy right behind them, uh, not on the lead lap. He is currently uh, two laps down. He did pit more recently, so that's where you see him with his fresher tires coming uh, by. Jeff Scott, he's made his way back up to the sixth position from Merrill, Wisconsin. Ty Trafford uh, up now nine spots from Fort Worth, Texas. Jason Kinney in eighth from Groton, Connecticut. Chad Hawkins in ninth. And then Matthew Gall right there in the 10th position from New Braunfels, Texas. So you have to imagine that from, for Matthew from here, just save as much fuel, assuming he's close. Well, I can tell you right now, Matthew Gall has won what I would believe to be the uh, long haul of the race because he came all the way up here from New Braunfels, Texas. <laughs> he did a great job of it. We'll get to the rest of the field here. Uh, Rowing River, North Carolina's Matthew Ace there in 11th. Rick Baldwin in his uh, Toyota from Roanoke, Virginia. 
Jeffrey Ledford, another one of those Foothills Motorsports teammates, also from North Wilkesboro in 13th. Mama T with a couple of those fans jumping in to our chat. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you all for joining us currently uh, in the 14th spot as we saw her battling Daniel Love. James Wagner is not on the lead lap, so he's not for position. He's got fresher tires as well. Daniel Love's got um, Chris Ramsey, again, not a lead lap car next to him. Then Tim Richardson back here in 16th. Mickey Devino is 17th. James Wagner, we mentioning, uh, mentioned just a moment ago, not on the lead lap. Back in 18th, Ramsey as well. Back there, 19th. And the biggest loser, or biggest loser at the moment, is uh, your points that are coming into tonight's race uh, with Jimmy Rowdy. And then Edward Fiedler, he is now back there in the 21st position, having stayed out as long as he did. So uh, we got a chance to go through the field, get through the drivers, and quite a bit of quite a few different stories going on through the field right now. For sure. So, you know, right now, Jimmy Rowdy, all he's wanted to do is stay on track and continue to gather as many points as he can. Daniel Love still riding in that 14th position. So uh, they're not really too far away from each other. No, they're not. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for, for you know Jimmy, he's not on the lead lap while Daniel is still hanging on there. Um, as Matthew Ace, he's going to be the first one to come down pit lane now with about 23 laps to go uh, for his final pit stop of the day. With to get his fight uh, score fresh feel goods and a full tank of gas to make it to the end I can't wait as we are approaching 25 to go from Chicago land oh my goodness well, we got 22 to go 22 to go wow 22 to go yes about to be 21 okay no I'm sorry it is 22 to go now yes are they crossing? Here it is. Now we're at now we're at uh, uh, 21 to go. Yeah, so Johnny Hurst uh, did finally get to capture that lead there from Andrew Smith as uh, that puts a new player at the front of this field. Um, Daniel Love now making his way down pit lane, so he'll make uh, what he hopes to be his final pit stop of the day. And I had my eyes on Matthew Gall. He's currently... Seven and a half seconds back, but you know, all it takes, of course, is Johnny Hurst and the rest of these drivers hitting pit lane, uh, like Barker and Stephen Shu are now for him to assume the lead. I mean, one little, one little mistake, Johnny Hurst. We saw the All Stars run out of gas on the last lap. I would hope that he gets one here tonight. Yeah, you sound good. All right. Thank you, Duke. I don't know what happened there. Um, want to get those checked out? Yes. It happens every once in a while. We get a uh, uh, get all, all, all messy. So, uh, with 19 to go, Johnny Hurst, uh, your leader now again, 11 spots up on his original starting spot of 12th, along with Andrew Smith, also up 11 spots. Um, running about half a second behind him. Now, uh, Andrew had pit two laps earlier than Johnny Hurst that last time, and I think it's showing here Johnny's uh, uh, tires on the long run are really prevailing for him as Dalton Steele has now hit pit lane. So um, how long do you want to extend it? And if you extend it as long as you do for some of these drivers, is it going to be a quick splash and go? Or are you going to, you know, do you, I mean, you have tires, yes, but... If only you know two or three laps to go, I, I maybe maybe a splash and go is all you need. Splash and go, for sure. Even if it's under green, here comes Johnny Hurst. Not in. Oh, here he's gonna bring Andrew Smith down too. Oh wow, he was Andrew being Smith. really aggressive. Andrew Smith was. Yeah, you don't want to uh, be overly aggressive coming into the pits early. All right, so Jason Kinney, he's currently in the second position. You see Barker going around him with the fresher tires. And then uh, Dalton Steele coming off pit lane now as well. So Kinney and Chad Hawkins still have to make their way down pit lane. Um, I 
Ledford I might be able to make it as here comes Kinney now. So Matthew Law has assumed the lead now as we have completed 59 laps with 16 laps to go. And uh, let's see, compared to the next driver who, if Jeffrey Ledford can make it, he's three and a half seconds back, but he also came in three laps earlier. So uh, Gall will have that advantage on the tires. So yeah, I think right now Matthew Gall's in a really good position uh, with where this race is heading. I, I couldn't agree more. And as they approach, uh, it looks like Johnny Hurst and Christopher Barker, they get a little side draft action going on and they touch. I want to point out something. Mama Teresa, Miss Teresa is up 14 spots according to the, my live timing here. Running yeah. in P5. Yeah, running P5, trying to stretch this fuel run as well. You know uh, you know what they, uh, Larry Mack always says, if you do what the leaders do, you're not going to go anywhere. So uh, got to do something different, and that's what she's trying is Chad Hawkins is going to make his way down pit lane. Um, so Mama T, Rick... Uh, we probably might be able to make it as well. So Mama T and Mick DeVino, you know, one of the usuals of trying to extend this as long as he can, always trying to get that strategy uh, to work. So those two are the only dr two drivers who have yet to hit pit lane uh, that are currently on the lead lap. And, um, well, really right now only eight drivers on the lead lap with uh, Matthew Gall still out there. I mean, maybe he knows something that we don't know. Well, I mean, he's got 30 seconds uh, over Christopher Barker, who we know, of course, can make it. Having pit already is, uh, you see Dalton Steele unlapping himself. And, um, yeah, Barker's not too much uh, further ahead. He's here going into turn number three. And then here is your leader. So he just recently unlapped himself. So 13 laps will not be enough uh, to catch him, uh, Matthew Gall. You have to be over two seconds a lap quicker. So that just simply wouldn't happen. So Matthew just got to be in save mode. He's got now almost an eight-second lead over Rick Baldwin there uh, in second. Matthew Gold is continuing. You know, I want to go back in time to the last time a driver had a big lead in a race that I was on the broadcast for, and that was the All-Star race. And I remember he ran out of gas. Yeah, but that was a big stretch as well. I, I really think having Pitt on lap 43, Matthew Gall can make it. I mean, that's 32 laps. Um, and I know we saw some of these drivers really extended 30-something laps on... on the, I mean, whoa, look at Mama T, actually. Uh, she's now on lap 30, almost 31 herself, uh, as well as Mickey DeVino uh, stretching it. So with his lead now, yeah, go ahead and clutch it a couple times as Mickey DeVino will finally make his way down pit lane with 11 now about to be 10 laps to go uh you know again speaking about points before this you know we didn't really mention matthew he is fifth in points actually uh he was 36 yeah 36 out coming into tonight's race um but he's gonna gain a ton going into tomorrow you know we there's a good chance we could have a a possible five driver opportunity to win the championship next week at Talladega of all tracks. Oh boy, I cannot wait for that one. Yeah, if, you're, if you guys are watching, make sure you are prepared to watch for next week. We might have a five drivers eligible um, mathematically to win the championship. As you see Andrew Smith getting now uh, to the inside, trying to get his lap back now back there in the eighth position. Uh, still up five spots from having his uh, from his 13th starting position. And he gets really, really tight there off of two. Uh, just trying to get, get as much of it as he can. As Mama T will finally make her way down pit lane. See, that's 30, almost 33 laps she went. I, I think Matthew Gall can do it. Especially with a now almost 14 second lead over Rick Baldwin. Who is trying to save t uh, fuel even more having pit four laps earlier. Uh, uh, than Matthew. Uh, Rick Ball will be a driver who I think could possibly run out of fuel, but I, I think Matthew's going to get it. Or he's got enough. I think he's got enough and not a drop more. Hey, that's all you need, right? <laughs> and, so you're, not, you're not wrong. And could you imagine, you know, you know, your driver coming into a race, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk with that, uh, uh, hopefully, with, uh, about, uh, about that, but um, where... You are 36 points out going into, you know, what's, what is two lap, two races to go. You know, there's a chance. You got to be smart with both races. And then on lap eight, 
there's a wreck and you are involved and you're using your fast repair and your first set of, uh, of tires. Like, that, that is not ideal whatsoever. So, you know, you also have to have that, you know, mental toughness, you know, to, to stick with your strategy and, and really make it work. And, you know, drivers like Matthew Gall, Rick Baldwin, Jeffrey Ledford, they're all trying to make it work. And then you got Johnny Hurst, uh, the first of your, you know, drivers who have pit. And it's a, a three-way battle for what these three are hoping could be for the win at one point here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Six laps to go. This time by and Angel, we're coming to get to, uh, we're coming to, you know, the, the five phalanges or the handshake lap. Five phalanges in the air. Yeah, about to be five laps to go. Uh, see these drivers just coming across. As here it is, Matthew Gall coming uh, across the line now himself. So yep, five laps to go with an 18-second lead. Yeah, he had better be clutching it. We're, we're gonna jump on board with him just to see. Oh, that's oh not it. gotta be. Turn it up. So it sounds like to me that he's not even he's not full throttle coming off the turn until he's straight where you know that's a good fuel saving tactic as well. But he's got a lot of throttle in it, I think. Uh, I mean he's just running his race. You know what? He didn't do anything different. Maybe yeah. he knows something we don't. Well exactly. well he knows he knows exactly what we don't, so he could very much have, you know, more than enough fuel um to make it to the end here and he could of course already been saving to make that happen so with now about to be three laps to go um and then we only have one more race left in this third season for the roughneck racing truck series what a great season it has been i mean these seasons just keep getting better and better i mean and again alan for a group of drivers and and, and really the core has is still here you know with some great additions um so far but these drivers, most of them, they all started iRacing together. It was the first time they had ever been in the league. It was the first time they had ever been, uh, had themselves um, in a broadcast. Nice. They'd never been interviewed, you know? <laughs> so, you know, th this group of drivers has just so done such a great job of really, you know, developing together and, you know, learning how to develop that racecraft around each other. And, you know, of course, you know, you're going to have your beating and banging. You're going to have your drivers angry with each other. But, you know what? That's what makes it fun. Well, right now, we got popsicle sticks in there. And Matthew Gall comes down the back straight away. And out of four to get the white flag. Out of four to get the white flag. That is correct. Matthew Gall, does he have enough? I don't think it matters. As long as he can get through the back stretch, he's got a 19-second lead right now over Rick Baldwin, who it's funny because... He's trying to save. So is Jeffrey Ledford. And you know some of these other drivers, Johnny Hurst, they're all right behind. I don't think it's going to matter, matter right now for Gall. Matthew Gall is at 19 second lead. Out of four. Down through the trial. And he will win here in Chicagoland. Matthew Gall, what a great job there. He's going to turn early attrition into a race winning strategy matthew gall with the win and then johnny hurst who i think will still come home in second place there um quite possibly wow what a great recovery for him and we'll have to see how some of these drivers do uh run out but what an amazing job there for matthew gall and probably one of the most dominant um wins in terms of uh distance between first and second that um we've ever he had here for the roughneck racing truck series Wow, that's all I got to say is wow. And he's going to get a lot, you know, a lot of congratulations to, you know, Matthew. This will be his first career uh, victory in the Roughneck Racing Truck Series. You know, he's, he's been here since day one. Um, races in just about every race. I'm not sure if he has missed a race, maybe one or two, um, if that. And he's he's definitely excited, I know. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and bring him on in here. Hold on just a moment. There it is, and Matthew, you've got Angel and Alan here in the SRM broadcast booth. You got us, buddy. What's up, Angel? It's been a minute. 
It's been a minute, but Matthew, here we are. You are a uh, the winner here tonight at Chicagoland. Walk us through. Um, man, what was going through your mind over the last couple of laps there? Well, I mean, over the last couple of laps, I, uh, I, I, you know, I kind of figured I had it in the bag, just get off the throttle. I had, I was like one lap to the good, so you know, no, no reason to to uh, to push it. But it really was a strategy earlier in the race. Um, basically, I got, I, you know, uh, the 29 turned in front of me. I got a meatball, and uh, I think we were what 10, 12 laps in. Um, I got, you know, got tires, got fuel. I saw that I could do 34 laps on a load, and I thought, well, you know, these things do go green. This is a good group of guides here. So, um, you know, I thought, hey, you know what? I could actually stretch this, and that's exactly what I did. I think when I pitted there under that long stretch, uh, I had 0.3 of a lap left on fuel. Wow. Um, so, you know, I stretched as far as I could, and then at, at, when it ended, I had one lap. So, I mean, if there would have been a caution, it wouldn't have worked out. But, uh, but hey, you know, it, that's not what happened. It worked out, and here we are. Unbelievable. And you saw a lot of drivers coming up and giving you a nice congratulations. Um, Matthew, it was, the, uh, was this your first win for the, for the series? No, I got one at Pocono earlier this po season. That's what you know. What I'm so sorry, I messed that one up. Hey, for and you everybody. know what? That was fuel mileage too. <laughs> well, you know what? Then how about this? We got we'll the fuel them. mileage king here. Then for um, right. uh, Matthew, so I apologize, to everybody. You know what? It's been a nice long season, um, Matthew. Before we let you celebrate, um, you I, there's a chance now that you know going into Talladega that you could be fighting for the championship. You know, you came in here fifth, 36 points out, but everybody else had problems. You, um, Rowdy finishing 14th, Daniel 11th, yeah. uh, Steven Shue was 7th. I mean, you had an opportunity to gain points on these drivers in front of you, you know, who where you needed to the most. Yeah, I know. I knew I needed this tonight, you know what I mean? And, and getting into that thing early, I thought, oh, shoot, this might be the season. But uh, but this worked out, so that's good. I knew I needed this because, you know, Talladega is a wild card. So I'm going to kind of take it easy there and, you know, just push it at the end and see what we can get. You know, if I can get a podium, if I can get top three, I'm happy with that, you know. Um, Obviously, a championship would be awesome. That's that's the goal. But uh, but you know, I just want a good, clean, you know, finish next week, and we'll just see where the cards fall. I I think that's that's fair. That's a great way to uh, uh, to look about it as well. Um, so next week, being being Talladega, and of course, as you mentioned, the 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 wild card um, of that. So you're gonna have a Ford going in there. Hopefully, uh, uh, helps put you at least in victory lane and maybe in four championships. So go ahead and let us know. Uh, who you gonna celebrate and who you'd like to thank for tonight's victory before well yeah we go ahead and let you celebrate it over yeah, the next well, week well first yeah first and foremost i want to thank uh roughneck racing for putting this on this group of admins and these guys are great um this is an awesome league um you've seen the racing this everybody that races in this league the the, the skill is picking up and and uh, we're doing really well so roughneck racing thank you very much uh wagner's welding i mean without them we could, wouldn't be able to do this um thank them a lot uh social outcast my teammates um, thank the good Lord upstairs for uh, giving me this opportunity, and uh, we'll see y'all next week. And we'll see you, Matthew. I, I, not only the road, uh, I assume then you know we'll hope next week for you that it's a fuel mileage Talladega race. <laughs> well, I haven't seen many of those, but I hope so. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let, uh, let's see, and and you know what? A big shout out as well um, in the YouTube chat there for the victory. So congratulations again, Matthew. We'll see you next week. All right, that was uh, race winner Matthew Gall. I apologize again, everybody, for uh, just a uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a mess up, but you know, every once in a while we'll, we'll have those. So uh, we'll go ahead and bring Johnny Hurst in. Alan, no, take us away. Johnny, this is Alan and uh, Angel up in the SRM booth. How are you doing tonight, buddy? Yeah, doing good. How are you guys? Hey, look, put him on it. Put it on the podium. You know, guys. Yeah, that was luck. <laughs> that was luck, <laughs> but. You know, take us through that race. What is is you seeing? You know, Matthew Gall run away with it. What did you think you had a chance to maybe make it back up there to him? Uh, I mean, I wanted to. I took two tires at last stop, but I mean, hats off to him. Um, he chose the right time to pit. He had the right strategy. You know, played his cards right. Just hats off to him. I waited way too long to pit. Um, it, it's just how it works. I had fast truck. I'll take a second. So, like, next time or next week, 
We go all the way to Talladega, Alabama for the last race of the season. Are we, uh, what's, what's the strategy going into Talladega? Are we gonna, gonna wait oh. in the back and let the cards fall where they fall or, or are we oh. gonna be aggressive? Oh no, man, that's home track. That's balls to the wall right there. It's uh, <laughs> it's, go, it's win or go home on that track. So looking forward to it. I like plate tracks. And trucks are a little different on a plate track, but I always uh, seem to find my way to the front. So yeah, just looking forward to it. Well, look, man, we're going to, before we get you out of here, is there anybody that you'd like to, to help got you here tonight? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank James Wagner's well, you know, super sponsor, great group, group of guys. I'd like to thank these roughneck guys and these uh, social outcast guys. Man, they're just a nice group, you know, put on some good races. So I'd just like to thank those guys. Well, look, my man, we're going to go ahead and let you celebrate this podium uh, finish with your team, and we'll see you in Talladega. Uh, appreciate you. All right, that was our uh, runner-up, and we'll go ahead and bring up our uh, third-place finisher, Christopher Barker, who well, about has a place uh, reserved. We about have a place reserved for uh, Barker <laughs> here in the SRM booth. Barker, you got us here tonight. I do. Loud and clear, buddy. Well, um, another top three finish. You just keep uh, knocking them out. But we, I know you said, you know, the goal is victories and uh, didn't quite get there tonight. What, what would have been the difference maker uh, should should uh, that 78 not have been able to, you know, had that pit strategy to make it to the end? Uh, I don't really. That's a tough one. I mean, he, he if maybe a caution. Um, it's, this league's getting better about the caution, so the strategies change a little bit. You know, last season everybody was like, I, I just have to save for that last 10 laps. You know, I know a caution's going to happen, but now we'll end a lot of races with uh, not even using all the tires. So, you know, if you just happen to pit on the right lap, you just get lucky sometimes. Yeah, I had mentioned that, you know, early on there for Matthew, where I said, well, you know, uh, if he decides to extend this, um, or, you know, the fact that it has gone green, he made it up to second place, and I said, well, uh, what's going to work out for him, I guess, is, you know, extend it for as long as he can, and uh, yeah. he, the, the extra set he used early has basically gone away with the the long green flag runs, and you mentioned, you know, oh, these, yeah. these nice long green flag runs that we're getting. Um, mm -hmm. so next week, you know, you, you head to Talladega, you know, you're not in that position, uh, necessarily four points, but we know your teammate Steven Shue is going to be in that Foothills Motorsports team, uh, yeah. really strong as Alan mentioned at the top of the broadcast. So, uh, what's, what's, what's the plan going to be looking like for Talladega for you guys? Try to stay near each other. That was kind of the plan tonight. And, uh, I think we had 20 or 21 to go. And I told Steven, I'm like, I think we need to pit now. It's going to stay green. You know, there's not going to be enough time to get mm -hmm. caught up. And we went into the pits. He got a little loose and turned sideways. And oh, that was, yeah, that was the end for him. I couldn't wait on him. I had to go. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's, that's, that's why he fell back so far. He just had a tough night, but if he would have been with me, maybe, maybe we could have got around Johnny. Uh, you know, that probably been about the best we could have hoped for. Yeah, well, definitely beneficial for Shu, uh, for Shu uh, you know, with a seventh place finish, but, you know, the guys in front of him having, you know, really bad nights as well to gain uh, some of those points. So uh, who you'd like to thank and uh, before we let you go, enjoy this, uh, well, another podium before we uh, well, meet you again next week at Talladega. Uh, the league, obviously, Tim, he does a great job running this thing. Uh, the sponsor, James Wagner. Um, wife and kids, teammates, Jeffrey Steven. You guys, y'all do an awesome job. And just everybody we race with, this is an awesome league. Yeah, it's It's been a great league. Uh, loved uh, broadcasting it so far. So we, we always appreciate the show that you guys put on. So uh, congratulations again, and uh, well, we'll see you next week. All right. See you, bud. I always love uh, the drivers here of the Roughneck Racing Truck Series. And again, mentioned, you know, man, they do put on some great, great races for us. They do, and boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here's so look, we're gonna get ready to go down the uh, starting or the finishing order here. And Angel, this has been one whale of a race here, but nonetheless, Matthew Gall will pick up the victory over Johnny Hurst and Christopher Barker, who finished second, third on the podium. Dalton Steele will finish fourth. Andrew Smith will come home P5. 
Jeff Scott will finish sixth. Seventh will be Stephen Shear. Rick Baldwin will come home eighth. Jeffrey Ledford will come home ninth. Running at your top ten will be Ty Trafford. Daniel Love going to take it home in 11th. Chad Hawkins going to finish it in 12th. Uh, all these drivers here a lap down with um, Matthew Gall staying out the way he did. Jason Kinney in 13th. Jimmy Rowdy, uh, your po points leader. No other bad light uh, for the points leader. Back-to-back uh, -back weeks here. So as they go into Talladega next week, he'll be looking to hold on to that for the ta uh, championship. Tim Richardson in 15th. Mama T would finish in 16th. Mickey Devino finishes 17th. 18th belongs to Matthew Ace. Edward Fielder in 19th. James Wagner in 20th. And then 21st belongs to Chris Ramsey. Only two laps separated the entire field. What a race. Yeah. Holy cow. Two laps, so, and that's considering that first and second were 22 seconds almost. <laughs> you know what's even more amazing? Everybody finished. We don't have a winner for the race to the beer stand. Well, I'd say Matthew Gall was a winner to the beer stand then because he had the trophy in hand while doing so. I want to thank everybody tonight for joining us on what was, again, another fantastic evening here on the Sim Racing Media Network, getting the opportunity and the blessing to present the Roughneck Racing Truck Series. Again, big shout-out to James Wagner's Welding and Admin Box uh, for their support. But again, James Wagner's Welding uh, for their continued support. Uh, throughout the seasons as we get ready to close out uh, only one more season uh, race left here in season number three and mention again we head to the high banks high speed of Talladega Super Speedway next week and uh, it's going to be a great uh, great opportunity and a great show for five you know four possibly five drivers uh, to compete for a championship uh, Alan any final thoughts before we let everybody go tonight well make sure you check out right now um, Racers Elite Xfinity Series is 35 laps into their 60 lap race. Tonight you got XMS Extreme Recmo Tech Cup Series. And they're at Richmond again. Um, let's see here. Saturday you got ISNF IS IS from Talladega. You have... Let's see, who else? Oh, we have Elite Cup Series Racing from Talladega. And Sunday morning, while you're sipping coffee... You can check out the Racers Elite, the full length, full length Talladega race, which I will be racing in on Sunday morning. Oh, and tomorrow night is the Racers Elite ex uh, next gen, and Dave Regal and Daniel Paulus Jr. will be on the call for that race. Sunday morning? My... What, what time again? Uh, I believe it's at 10.30. Let me double check here. Sunday morning, next gen. It is at. So they go to practice at 9 30 Eastern. Uh, 11 20 Eastern is qualifying, and 11 30 is. 11 30 Eastern will be the green flag. Nah, well, good luck, buddy. Go ahead and make up, uh, make up all those laps. Uh, get that victory um, in hand. So. Uh. <laughs> And then Sunday night, the nightcap will be the uh, SNN, the Sunday Night NASCAR League. I will fill in for Matt Mettler as he is on, as I will be on the call with Dave Regal, and that is the full length race. Also, 188 laps from Talladega. So, if you're, I, I believe it's going to rain in Alabama. I don't want to be the rainmaker, but I believe it's going to rain. So, might as well just watch it all here on. The, SRM. There you go. Watch it all on SRM and rooting on some of our uh, some of our own as they race in that race. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight. Have a great rest of your evening, and uh, we'll see you next week to crown a uh, season three champion. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great rest of your night.